We have a Dalton Reisner update after his visit with the Minnesota Vikings two days ago. Welcome to the Vikings Now by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman, and on today's show, we're going to be diving into the latest around Dalton Reisner following his visit, and then also we're going to be going over some news and takeaways from Minnesota Vikings training camp. They had a walkthrough yesterday, so not a lot came out of it. We're just going to be kind of diving into the recent practices, and I'll be giving you guys my thoughts and just the overall takeaways as they do actually have their night practice tonight. So if you guys are going to that, you know, shout out to you that's always something I've always wanted to go to and I haven't been able to do so but before we dive into the Dalton Reisner update we got a challenge from our bosses here at chat sports listen guys the football season is just around the corner and listen we're a company here at chat sports and we uh you know we look at the numbers a lot so the more subs we get on this video the more NFL and Vikings content you guys are going to get I got a challenge directly from my bosses, and now I'm challenging you guys. Just hit that subscribe button, lock us in, any Vikings news, rumors that come out around this team, post-game reaction videos, whatever you think, we got you covered. Lock us in and hit that sub button right now. So the Dalton Reisner update kind of comes from uh, two roster moves the Vikings did make. They actually ended up waving an offensive lineman, and then they signed an offensive lineman right after. And uh, there was a little grace period uh, after they actually waved Sam Schlut Schluter out of uh, University of Minnesota, actually. Shout out to him. There was a little grace period here before they signed Christian uh, Dularo um, that I thought the Vikings, you know, waved him to sign Dalton Reisner, but they ended up signing Christian Dularo, who uh, actually was an offensive tackle from the Denver Broncos. Going to be a swing tackle. Don't really expect him to make this team, but it kind of sucks that Sam Schluter got uh, waived. You know, obviously, anytime you could uh, bring in a golden gopher and have him stay on this team, I'm always a fan of. But now it leaves a question. Is Dalton Reisner next? Is he going to be the next signee for the Minnesota Vikings? We know they brought him in for that visit and uh, put him in through a little bit of a workout that day, and I'm hoping he's next because Dalton Reisner will be a huge upgrade, in my opinion, especially in the pass protection standpoint of the offensive line because we know Ed Ingram, Ezra Cleveland, they may be fine run blockers, but they ch they struggle with blocking the quarterback. This was actually what Kevin O'Connell had to say after Vikings training camp two days ago, talking about the Vikes bringing in Dalton Reisner, and he said, we really just wanted to bring him in and get to know him a little better. Use the process of a visit to do that and see if we could possibly take what we think is a strong group and make it even better. And this was also something funny that came out when Reisner was in the building. Uh, Kirk was wearing number 66 as his practice jersey. First off, that's probably the most Kirk Cousins thing I've ever seen is him rocking 66 in this massive oversized jersey. He's got those massive oversized pads as well. He's just a... Uh, Swag is not something Kirk uh, excels in. But then, obviously, Dalton Reisner, he's wearing 66. You know, So, clearly, Kirk wants the interior offensive lineman to head to Minnesota. But I will say, he was actually wearing 66 to show support for uh, Ryan, Ryan Wright. So, it wasn't actually for Dalton Reisner. But this was just kind of something funny that uh, was being floated around on Vikings Twitter. So, Kirk, he wants Reisner. I do, too. But I'll ask you guys. Do you guys think the Vikings should sign Dalton Reisner. Give me an S for sign or give me a P for pass down in the comment section. YouTube, they're going to sit back. They're going to throw you a dirty old ad break right now. So let it play. Answer today's pinned comment if the Vikings should sign Dalton Reisner. Now let's talk about it. Let's get into some training camp takeaways. I'm just itching for the Vikings' first preseason game against my man Smitty Seattle Seahawks next Thursday night. We're going to have a little, uh, we're gonna have a little Drew Locke, uh, Jaron Hall battle, which I'm super excited to see. But we're a week away from that, and now we got some takeaways coming your guys' way right now. So the number one takeaway that I had from just kind of – you know, kind of looking at all the news articles and everything, obviously we can't be there, but just kind of looking at all the Twitter videos and everything, I think the Brian Flores impact has honestly been understated in the NFL or just amongst Vikings media members. Like, the Brian Flores defense, it looks completely different from the Ed Donatel defense. We know Ed Donatel wanted to play his corners 10 yards off and really sit back in that soft zone coverage. Flores is complete opposite. He wants to bring the heat. He wants to bring the pressure. And that's what Kirk Cousins actually noticed. He had a press conference as well. And he listed three things that he has noticed differently from going up against Donatello's defense and now going up against Flores' defense. So the number one thing that he's noticed is that he, he just throws off the wide receiver's timing a lot. Whether it's be like some plays they're jamming them at the line of scrimmage or some plays they are taking a page out of Donatello's book and dropping them back in the coverage. Then also tons of pressure. There's a clip that kind of went viral. It was back-to-back -back plays for the Vikes defense. Harrison Smith blitzed twice off the edge and got home to Kirk Cousins freely. Nobody was even there. It was a great scheme, great play design from Flores. And that's what I like to see because that's what Mike Zimmer used 
Harrison Smith as so much is that kind of off-ball blitzer, almost used a mo uh, as a linebacker half the time. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what he does there, uh, how he uses Smith. But then obviously, obviously the different disguises. Like Flores, like he could have eight dudes on the line of scrimmage and five of them could be dropping back, three could be coming. You really don't know with what he's trying to get done. So seeing Kirk Cousins, the fact that he's noticing these things kind of gives me a, you know, a positive attitude of this defense next season. But number two, it's Alexander Madison. And I listen, I'm happy for Madison. I think this is the right move, um, having him be RB1 like off the jump, but I still want this to be more of a running back by committee. Because if you look at the Vikings running back room, like I'm a huge fan. You guys know this. I'm Ty Chandler, you know, the fifth rounder, went to Tennessee, transferred to North Carolina, ran for over 3,000 yards in college. I'm a huge fan of him. And then also, I love Kane Wongwa. I think he could be a great gadget guy, throw him a screen here and there. But then Dwayne McBride, I mean, he led all of FBS in uh, rushing yards last season, ran for over seven yards per carry. So I'm interested to see if he could kind of crack this rotation and make an, or make an impact as a running back for this team next year. But Madison as a starter, which is why I'm not like totally against it, and I see where they're coming from. In six games, when Dalvin Cook did go down, he started six of them, and he had over 115 total yards per game. I mean, 80 rushing yards. Yards per carry, a little lower than I would like, but still 4.1 yards per carry. Obviously, Madison's a touchdown machine when he gets his chances. You know, he's that big, bruising, thunder type of back. Anytime he's at the goal line, he makes sure he punches it in. So he did have six touchdowns. But overall, with the Vikings running back group, I do think Madison, first month of the year, he'll be getting probably 20, 25 carries a game if the game script goes the Vikings' way. But then do expect Ty Chandler, Kane Wongo, and Dwayne McBride to kind of mix in there as well. And then the third takeaway here, Brian O'Neill, Daniil Hunter, they're back. Clap it up for them. Uh, obviously, O'Neill coming off that torn Achilles last season. He was a huge loss, and we definitely noticed his uh, – you know, impact not being there in the Giants playoff game as well. But then Daniil Hunter, we obviously know his hold-in situation. He got the new contract. He's going back and forth with Brian O'Neill. It was a sweet cl clip of them kind of battling each other. You know, going head-to-head -head and kind of that iron sharpens iron. So both those guys, they're back. Awesome to have. Really improves the trenches overall. But then the Josh Metellus hype, man. This is a – like, like, it really continues to grow. Like, every single practice that comes out from uh, Minnesota, like – we get an update saying, oh, Josh Metellus did this. Josh Metellus did that. And I'm starting to think he might be able to start for this group at the safety spot. Like, right now, I, I got it as Lewis seen at the free safety position. We know Harrison Smith, and no doubt, no, no doubt, he is going to be the strong safety this upcoming year. But talk about the free safety spot. Like, could it go Cam Bynum, Metellus, Lewis seen? Right now, I think it's probably Metellus starts week one. Um, you know, Metellus did a great job filling in for scene last season when he uh, suffered that uh, compound leg fracture in New or er, in London versus New Orleans last season. But Lewis Seen, I mean, he's balled out as well. But I think Flores would probably lean towards the vet in that group. But also, Flores, the defense, you could run three safeties very easily. Like, you could pop one down in the linebacker. I mean, Metellus, Smith, and Seen are all extremely versatile. They could all do that. So right now, I do think maybe Metellus starts at free safety We'll have to see, though. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, Flores kind of deploys his uh, safety unit because they're all versatile, and you got three dudes that I would love to all see on the field next season. Now, final here is uh, our head coach, uh, Kevin O'Connell. Uh, I was always a big fan of him, obviously, after last season. You know, you win 13 games, win the division uh, in your first year as a Vikings head coach. How could you not be a fan? But just any time I hear him talk and just kind of hear him explain his thoughts and everything, like, it literally fires me up, and especially in the quarterback documentary, uh, on Netflix, anytime he got any screen time and he was talking about the Vikes or Kirk or whatever it may be, he just impressed me. And this was an interesting quote that he had at training camp as well. Uh, it just kind of shows the, you know, how bad he wants it and how passionate he truly is about this job. Uh, he said, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about a formation or a play. Sometimes I'll grab my phone and shoot myself an email so I don't forget. And that's why I'm just all in on KOC. And I love that quote because I can just see him late at night. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. He's like, oh, I could run this play out of 12 personnel. I could run this play out of 21 personnel. And just seeing his mind just kind of get going. Then he's like, oh, I, I got to remember this. I got to, uh, you know, I got to email this to myself. So he's just a football junkie, definition of a football guy. And it's cool to see just kind of his confidence to kind of take that next step as year two as a head coach. Now, obviously, year one as a head coach, you kind of want to, you know, win your team over a little bit. But now it seems like he's transitioning into, you know, not like earning respect or he's already respected now. And now he's just kind of focused on coaching and it really has, you know, no pressure on him. I mean, winning 13 games and winning the division in year one, you got full confidence in yourself and in your unit and in your coaching staff that you can do it again 
in year two. But I think the Vikings are going to be pretty solid next year. You know, I think a lot of people are undervaluing them, and clearly Vegas is as well. They got the over-under at eight and a half wins next season. I think the Vikings, I think they're going to go 10 and 7, but they're going to be a better overall team than they were last year when they won 13 games. We'll ask you guys. You guys agree or disagree with Vegas? Give me an O for over or U for under if the Vikings or that Vegas set at eight and a half wins for the Vikes. As always, guys, subscribe. Keep us in the loop or keep yeah, keep yourself in the loop, I guess I should say. Any Vikings news and rumors that come out around this team will be your go-to Vikings YouTube channel. See you guys next time. Let's go, Vikes.